up guy evergreen fly guy here um today we are doing another steelhead fly we're going to be doing the hobo spay i got a one i tied right here just a few minutes ago kind of uh show you what all i've been using on it but uh they're kind of a process to tie so after i show you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna get part of it set up already because just because it would take so long to put in the whole movie but let me show you what we're going to be using here so for our if i can find them gosh i got stuff everywhere over here here we go i'll put them over here so for our shank and stuff that i'm going to put together beforehand i got some uh these are 40 millimeter shanks uh they're in a purple it says pink, but I would say that's purple. And for our intruder wire, I got some of this uh, hairline dubbing LLC. I got some of the, what is the exact color of that? It's a red, but it's like a nice wine red. It's, it's very nice. I really like the color of it. I don't know if you can see it that good or not. But uh, I'm going to rig that together, and then we'll get back with the rest of it. All right, guys, I'm back. We got our shank and our uh, intruder wire with our hook all set up. Now, I, for the hooks, I'm using the uh, Kamigatsu, uh, they say tarpon on them, but you can use them for a lot of other things, obviously. And these are two lot. Oh, there we go, that way. And uh, they do have a barb on them, so if you want to fish these, I'm, I'm going to press all these down or grind them off, whichever one works better uh, before they're actually used because almost any place you're fishing still hit you're gonna be fishing barbless so um, get right into it I got some pearl Chanel pink um, I don't know what the exact name of this is just like a little twist but uh, I'm just gonna get out a couple uh, links of this and then uh Tie it down to my into my hook shank here. So what I like to do is I like to come back here and line it up, get it right there, on, sitting on top of the hook shank as best I can, and then I'll just tie it down real good. Okay, without some slack. Now you're just gonna come around here, and we're gonna make a big butt into this. We're gonna build it up, build it up. And you can cross over your string because I'm gonna go about, not midway, but about right in here. And I'm gonna come back over it. And this is, I'm just making a big ball at the end of this, just a big ball. And I'm keeping it all pretty tight. Trying to make everything even. I'm gonna come back up over here. And we're gonna tie it off. I don't like the way I grab it, hold on. I went a little too far over, there we go. That's good and secure. I'm just gonna trim it off close to the top. Can't even tell if there's much of a difference. Now I'm gonna pull out some slack on my line here. Pretty good amount, about five inches or so. And uh, a little bit more. I'm gonna make a loop here for my dubbing, dubbing loop. Wrap it around a few times. Now I'm gonna cross cross over twice. I'm gonna wrap wrap back down on the uh, toward the pink with this, and then back up. Now I like to pull out a lot of slack and then just set it up on the table out of my way. Now I'm gonna leave my loop there. Now for this next part, I'm using this uh, purple uh, flash dubbing. You can use whatever color you'd like. 
I'm just trying to stick to a pink and pink and purple here. Dark purples, bright pinks. Because that's what I'm told is their colors. And I'm just kind of kneading it out with my fingers here. There's a whole bunch of different methods you can do with this, but I've found that I like to just knead it out real wide like that, put it in the center of my loop here, hold that with one hand, and then I take this little fly grabber, or if you got a dubbing or a dubbing twister, and use it. They're basically the same thing. Now I'm just spacing this out along this line here a little bit more. Make sure it's a little bit compact, but kind of together. Now I'm going to twist the string up, and I'm being careful not to pull too hard here, because when you sw start twisting this, it adds more tension on the line. And it makes it easy for the line to snap. I'm going to be very careful that I don't snap the line. Now I'm going to come over here. Like I said, keeping a good tension, but not anything so it can snap. And I'm twisting it up. Now, I'm going to come back up here with my line. Just cut it off. There we go. Now, I didn't exactly get it where I wanted it. And that's just fine. So I'm going to take... I'm going to pull out some more dubbing, and I'm just going to run it on my line like normal. But I don't get this too tight. I leave it kind of kind of bushy. And I'm going to finish that up right there, up there toward our head. All right. Now I'm going to tie our head up here real good. Start putting some thread right there. Keeping that good teardrop look. I'm going to pat my dubbing down for now. So I got our dubbing body on there. And with my previous two, I had been adding, oof, those are some sharp hooks. Some, uh, well, you can't really see it in that one too good. In the first one, you can't because I put a little too much. Some uh, purple flash. And, uh, I don't know if I want to do this one that until the end with this one so I'm gonna wait on that part and we're just gonna move on to the next step which is some purple Marbo and this is just White River brand or Cabela's brand purple Marbo and uh, yeah. uh, I got about three strands here and I want to cut the heavy uh, heavy thick butt end off just just the the thick part so I can bend it a little better still making sure I keep a lot up here and I'm gonna put it right here where my thread is at I'm gonna kind of space it around the fly Now I've kind of looked and you could do your feathers like that and space them around as you need them, trim them. And I'm actually, I had been wrapping them around, but I think this way is a lot neater than the previous ones. So I'm going to rebuild my head back up here around the stems of this to get my teardrop back. This does you quite a bit of thread, so be patient with it. Oop, fell off a little bit there. All right, just gonna trim up some feathers over here. All right, I'll get that a little bit more toward the end. Oop, I had a feather fall out on me. That's okay. 
Still got plenty left. Making sure I got all this down in here because that feather falling out made me think, oh, maybe I need to go back down here and grab that a little bit more. All right. Now is when I'm going to add a little bit of flash to it. And I've been sitting here thinking, and I don't think I want to go back with the purple. So I actually have some pearl. And I'm just going to pull out uh, this another one of the White River Cabela's brand. Just some pearl colored flash. It's very similar to rainbow from what I've noticed. I think I'm just going to pull out two strands. Just gonna grab them in the middle and I'm gonna tie it up here a little bit like that move the stem the ends out of the way and then tie it uh oh they're back up we're getting too far all right let me reset here for a minute we're getting too far up the the eyelid so come back here oh, keeps wanting to move down on me Every time I listen up on it, it moves down. There we go. And I'm just going to cut that off with the thread again and cover it with the thread. here and I'm just going to position this to where basically I got two through two streams of flash running through each side and I'm just cutting it off at the bottom so it's even with the feathers that uh, it's in and now we're essentially done I'm just trimming up some parts here My vice weight keeps wanting to fall back on me. All the pulling I'm doing. Now I'm just going to take my whip finish tool right here and I'm going to load it up. And I'm just going to tie it off. Oh, slipped. Right there. Ooh, hope I don't break the thread. Okay. Yeah, I had that super tight there. You know what? I don't like how that came out. I'm going to do another one just to play it safe. Now we're good and secure. All right. Now, at this point, you would just go ahead and secure it with some uh, uh, cement or UV glue like I have, but I actually have my camera sitting on my UV glue. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you guys what we got. This is our purple and pink hobo, hobo, hobo spade named after the river I would actually like to use this on, hopefully, up in the Olympic Peninsula. And I think that came out pretty good, and I believe I'm going to continue to use the Marbo like that instead of wrapping it, because that just, I feel like that looks really good. All right. All right, guys, that's been the Hobo Spay. Uh, there it is one more, one more time. Hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed doing the, uh, doing the Steelhead videos. They seem to actually gather the most attention on my page. This is my second one. I have a third one. I have all the stuff for it now that I have some more shanks. Although uh, my shanks are purple and this is kind of a more of a white.
white brown type fly so uh might actually see if i can get the color off that so it could be just a solid steel or something because i don't think the purple contrast will work too great but who knows you're not gonna really gonna be able to see it that good but uh this has been uh fly time it's another episode with me thanks for watching if you liked it go like and subscribe i'd really appreciate it and go catch some fish guys